Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ancient Life Hacks. I am Jared Madsen. I have a master's degree in Chinese medicine. I lived in China for many years. I am fluent in Chinese, and I am very interested in ancient cultures around the world and the wisdom that we can gain from those and how we can use those in our lives today. And today, we will be analyzing various physical activities, anything from weightlifting to yoga to stretching to meditation, and how Chinese medicine looks at those, particularly finding what's right for you, right? So not just what do these activities do, but what body type do you have? What energies do you have? And which ones should you be incorporating more into your life and which ones less or not at all? So we will dive into those today. We'll go into some details. Before we do that, please subscribe to this channel, uh, hit the like button, and please share this with your friends and family. I don't know if the algorithms like me or not, but you want to know what? I hope that you like the show and that you can send this to your friends. We'll take the grassroots approach. Who needs some lousy algorithm telling us what to watch? We can introduce things to our friends and family. You can also check out the website, ancientlifehacks.com, and we have a fancy dancy newsletter, a free newsletter, that I will put my notes that I am using into the, the newsletter. So I'll put some stuff in the description below to refer to, but if you really want the good stuff and more of the details, please subscribe to our newsletter. You can get to that at ancientlifehacks.com. Dot com. Okay, so let's dive into it. We're just going to dive straight into it. Weightlifting. Positive aspects of weightlifting. It is what you could consider a yang tonic. So you have yin and yang in the body. Yin is your more solid energy. Uh, it's actual, it's like even like the actual organs in your body itself, the fluids, that type of thing. And then yang is more of your movement, your activity those energies. So weightlifting is considered a yang tonic. So somebody who uh, doesn't have a lot of yang energy would want to do this. What I have written here is weightlifting primarily promotes yang energy, benefiting the kidneys and spleen. The kidneys are associated with vitality and strength and also willpower and the spleen is responsible for digestion and transforming food into energy. Weightlifting can enhance both. So if you're looking for more vitality, and if you're looking at improving your digestion, believe it or not, weightlifting might help with that. Weightlifting also improves circulation. Of course it does. So is it good for the heart? Of course it is. Is it good for the lungs? Of course it is. It is also good for bone health. Giving that resistance helps strengthen the bones. So if you're somebody without so, well, if, if you have too dense of bones, though, we'll get into some of the people who probably shouldn't be doing weightlifting in a minute here, but it actually can help the bones. The bones connect to the kidneys. And so we saw earlier that weightlifting helps with, with kidneys. This is another thing. It, it helps healthy bones, I have written here, are associated with kidneys as they store essence, and provide structural support. So that's another thing that we don't always think about, but I think many personal trainers will tell you that by strengthening certain muscles, it will help with the structural support. That will alleviate pressures the wrong way on your structure, on the, the bones of your body. And it can help boost self-confidence because if you're big and strong, hey, how many big, strong people do you see who aren't very confident? Not a lot, I'll tell you that much. Negative aspects of weightlifting. So if you have a yang excess constitution, if you have too much yang and not enough yin to begin with, you that will aggravate your, your body. So you don't want to go, for example, somebody who's like real fiery to begin with, and they might even be drawn to weightlifting because of that. But then that becomes burning the candle at both ends, right? So oftentimes we'll see these massive bodybuilders or these, you know, 
they're going to end up having problems later in life. So let's not go that far necessarily, even though it might seem cool. Uh, right. And then it has problems for people like that. And I'm sure that many bodybuilders might tell you as well that they would have restlessness, irritability, insomnia. That's because of the excess young energy. So we want everything to be in balance. So weightlifting is good for people who do not have an excess of young and want and need more young. They're more on the yin side. If you're on the young side already, you, you probably don't want to go too heavy into weightlifting. Intense weightlifting without proper rest and recovery may lead to chi and blood stagnation. This can manifest as much muscle tension, pain, and potential blockage of chi flow. So a little bit of weightlifting can help with it. And what we, we definitely want the flow of chi, and we don't want blockages in Chinese medicine. That's a big thing. But if you do too much weightlifting, too intense, it can it can block. So I think what we're seeing here, the gist is if you don't have a lot of yang energy, a little bit of weightlifting would be good for you. But don't do anything in excess. Those who should avoid weightlifting is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Anybody who's really old should avoid heavy weights. Anybody who's pregnant should avoid heavy weights. Anyone who has an, a physical injury, recover first. Yin deficiency is, is kind of the bloods and the fluids of the body. Those people definitely need to be careful when about doing too much weightlifting. Individuals with a significant yin deficiency should be cautious with weightlifting. Excessive yang promoting exercises which is weightlifting, can worsen symptoms like hot flashes, dryness, and insomnia associated with yin deficiency. So if you are experiencing things like hot flashes and a lot of dryness, go see your Chinese medicine practitioner. Let them help you get that figured out. Don't go too much into weightlifting or you're going to make it worse. Aerobic exercises. What do aerobic exercises do according to Chinese medicine? They enhance qi circulation, so the energy of the body. Aerobic exercises, like running and swimming, promote the circulation of qi and blood throughout the body. This benefits the heart, spleen, and lungs by improving cardiovascular health digestion and oxygenation of tissues. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's not really that hard to run, uh, understand, right? If you're running or you're swimming or you're doing something like that, it's really going to get your blood pumping and the movement of blood is closely connected with the movement of chi. So if we'll get into this a little bit, but if, if you need your chi moving, go for a run, go for a swim. A chi tonic aerobic exercises can help boost chi energy, benefiting individuals with chi deficiency. So it's not just the movement of chi. It can also help boost chi, help create more chi in your body if you don't have strong enough chi. People with symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, and low energy levels may find their chi replenished through regular aerobic activities. Okay, fatigue and weakness can come from many things. So as long as it's not some sort of bad disease or something like that. But if it comes from qi deficiency, and again, you can go to a Chinese medicine practitioner and they can help you figure out if you have qi deficiency, then aerobic exercises would be very beneficial for that. Emotional balance aerobic exercises are known to release endorphins. Yes which can positively affect mental and emotional well-being. This can help balance the mind and alleviate symptoms of stress and anxiety. Okay, this also connects connects back to the first one that we talked about is the chi circulation. Okay, stress and things like that make your chi stagnant. It makes them not move. And so by doing aerobic exercises, it helps relieve that. It helps get the chi going, not having it stagnate. And so if you are not, if you are a person without any stress, um, good for you. Uh, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has no stress. That's amazing that you are that person. I guess you don't need aerobic exercises. Congratulations. You can do a different thing 
or you can not do anything. You don't have any stress. You, I guess you, it's great for you. All right. <laughs> Respiratory health. Yes, of course, aerobic exercise. We don't have to go too deep into that. That's pretty self-explanatory. It gets lungs breathing, gets oxygen in very good for respiratory health. Some of the negative sides, what you would want to be careful of. Uh, excessive heat and yang. Okay. Again, yang is, is, is like the movement, the function of the body. Excessive or intense aerobic exercises, especially in individuals with an already yang excess constitution, can lead to excess heat in the body. Symptoms may include excessive thirst, restlessness, and, and insomnia, similar to weightlifting. So if you're already kind of hot and you've got all this, this energy as it is, you need more balancing things. You need more yin exercises. You don't want to be lifting a bunch of weights and doing a bunch of running. Uh, that will, that you're, you're just going to be burning too much of your candle. Okay. And then yin deficiency. Okay, so vigorous and prolonged aerobic exercises can exacerbate yin deficiency. Those yin deficiencies may, uh, those with yin deficiency may experience increased dryness, hot flashes, and night sweats. The same problem. If you are yin deficient, yin deficient, cre yin deficiency creates what is called false fire. That is where you feel warm, but it is not a true heat. It is because you have a deficiency of yin. So you can think of it like this. I will do a quick explanation. You have yin and yang, okay? As long as those two are balanced, everything is nice and great. Now, if your yang increases, and we were talking about this before, you're, you're, you know, if you're with somebody of, of yang, then you're going to feel really hot. You're going to have this excess fire. But, okay, so now we go back to baseline. If yin decreases, we kind of have the same thing here in relation to each other. The yang is higher than the yin. Now, you're go so you're going to feel heat symptoms, but that is not because the, yin, the yang has gone up. That is because the yin has gone down. Symptoms of false fire are things like hot flashes, uh, feeling like hot and sweaty in the palms, palm, the bottom of the feet, the chest, the middle of the chest sometimes, um, night sweats. These are heat symptoms that are considered to be false fire, and they come from yin deficiency, right? So this is where it gets a little complex. If you say, if you say, oh, I'm hot. Are you hot at night? Yeah, yeah, I'm really hot at night. Are you hot during the day? No, not so much. Sounds like you have yin deficiency, right? But if you say, you know what? I just I'm I'm just hot all day. I'm just oh man, I just feel like I'm on fire all day. That you sound like a young excess person, right? Both of these people probably should not be doing weightlifting or uh, aerobic exercises. They need to do some of the other exercises that we're going to get into to help balance you out. And then you know again, aerobic exercises. If you broke your leg, don't do aerobic exercises. Ask your doctor, obviously, if you've had some injury or health problems or something like that. Now we will go to the, so those uh, weightlifting and aerobic exercises were a little bit, a little bit on the stronger side of exercise, a little bit more vigor. Now we'll look at yoga and Pilates. Those two are similar, not exactly the same, but they have a lot of crossover. Okay. Yoga. Ha. Huh balance the chi flow. Yoga practices focus on postures, breathing, and meditation to balance chi flow in the body. This benefits multiple organs, organs, deeper parts of the body, right? Including heart, lungs, spleen, kidneys, and liver by enhancing energy circulation and promoting overall health. Now, what I did not write here was that by doing these slow moving exercises, and we're going to see this as we dive deeper into all these slow moving exercises, it allows the chi to go deeper into your body, to flow more harmoniously within your body. Whereas things like weightlifting and running and swimming, that's the chi on the outside, 
what we would call the outside, right? It's the muscles. It's not really so much, so much the organs, a little bit, but not so much, where some of these slower moving, or even when we get to meditation, no moving, the energy is able to nourish the inside a little bit more. So we're starting with yoga, which still has movements. It's not like full-on meditation necessarily, but we're starting to dip into aspects of that, of helping more strongly helping some of these, your internal systems. Okay. Yin and yang balance. Different types of yoga offer practitioners the ability to balance both yin and yang energies. Okay. I'm not a yoga expert. Maybe some of those, some of you out there who are can clarify, but apparently there are different, different types of yoga. I mean, I've heard of hot yoga and things like that, and those will help different you know, balance different different types of the body. So if you're more yang, I'm sure there's yogas that help with that. If you're more yin, there's yogas that help with that. Mind-body connection. Yoga emphasizes the mind-body connection, supporting emotional well-being and mental health used to alleviate stress. Okay, well, so far, all exercises that we're finding help allevi alleviate stress. So that's good. Uh, it also helps with muscular and skeletal. Yeah, I mean, you're you're strengthening the muscles, but you're doing it in a different way than weightlifting, right? Because a lot of yogas, you're, you're holding positions. And so you're, the yoga postures and stretches improve flexibility and strength, benefiting muscles and bones. This also supports spleen, stomach, kidneys, and bones. We went over that before, how the spleen and stomach connect to the muscles, the kidneys connect to the bones. So yoga will help with both the, the external and the internal. That's great. Here's some things to watch out for if you're doing yoga. Practicing yoga with incorrect alignment can lead to chi stagnation or blood stagnation. That makes sense. You just think about it if you, well, not that yoga would do this, but you can think about it like if you fall asleep on your arm and then you wake up and your arm's all numb because the blood hasn't flowed there. Yeah, because you're in a weird posture. So if you're not doing the movements right, you could end up possibly doing more harm than good, right? Not letting the blood flow the right way, kind of blocking your, your chi and things like that. So any of these exercises, you definitely want to get a good one and make sure that you're doing it right. Overindulgence in yin yoga. So yoga that would be more, more on the inside. So probably more of a, more calm, that kind of thing. Or practices that overly emphasize relaxation, right? And stretching can potentially exacerbate yin deficiencies. Individuals may experience coldness, sluggishness, or dampness. So the concept behind that is if you're not moving much at all and you know possibly you just think if cold enters your body it's it's you know you need your body should be warm you should be moving and if you have cold that enters and just sits there that's not good dampness just like dampness in a house right if it enters into your body and doesn't move uh it's not good for your body and so too long if you're not doing it right, you you might get some stagnation in the body. But if you're doing it right and doing it well, you shouldn't have that problem. It, you should feel great. Okay, Pilates, a very similar thing. One thing that Pilates focuses a lot on is core strength. So uh, it supports the spleen and stomach, aiding digestion and energy transformation. So Pilates, in theory, could help people with digestive issues. Uh, muscle balance. Yes, of course. Uh, for anyone who's done Pilates, you know, there, you just pay a lot of attention on the, the, the feeling of, of where your body is, making sure the movements are correct. And so that is going to be very good for, uh, the overall body awareness, muscle balance. And we also have that it can help the liver because, uh, the blood connecting to the liver, connecting to the, the tendons, of the body, Pilates can help with that. Spine too, for sure. I mean, again, if you're doing proper stances and you're 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 exercising the muscles that that do that, you're going. It will help your spine, give you better posture, uh, which is going to be very beneficial to your kidneys and your 
back. Negative sides of Pilates. Pilates can be quite young in nature. Sometimes it can. Emphasizing strength and muscle engagement. Individuals with yin deficiency should practice Pilates mindfully to avoid overstimulation. So just don't go overboard with the Pilates. That's it, right? Excessive heat. Intense Pilates sessions, especially in hot environments, can generate excessive heat, right? So somebody who has a heat imbalance in the body this might not help with it. You might want to do something else like some meditation, something like that. All right, before we get into meditation, let's go a little bit further down the line. Now let's talk about stretching and flexibility exercises. So stretching. Stretching can help balance excess yang, okay? Stretching and flex flexibility exercises promote yin qualities by enhancing relaxation, softness, and flexibility. Oh, hey, guess what? We were talking about that in bodybuilding. People with excess yang instead of bodybuilding, why don't you try stretching? These exercises can be particularly beneficial for individuals with excess yang energy to help calm and cool the body. Muscle and tension health. Stretching exercises improve the health of muscles and tendons, which are associated with the liver and the gallbladder. So stretching can help the liver and the gallbladder. It can also help relieve some stress because the liver and gallbladder have to process the toxins of the world, also known as stress. This can help reduce muscle tension, improve circulation and joint health. Yes, very good. Stretching enhances the flow of chi and blood. Yes, it does. It pulls on your meridians. It stretches them out, out and helps, helps uh, relieve any stagnation, which would then in turn help the flow, right? If you don't have stagnation, everything should flow smoothly. That's what stretching is doing. Benefit heart, spleen, and lung? Sure, that would have benefit in anything, right? And emotional well-being. We talked about that a little with the liver, right? Help help those toxins of the world be processed. Help your liver do a little stretch. Overemphasis on stretching and flexibility exercises, especially in individuals with naturally yin constitutions, can potentially exacerbate yin excess. This may lead to feelings of coldness, dampness, or sluggishness. Okay, that's with yin excess. That would be somebody who already is very damp, somebody who already is very cold. Okay, stretching might not be the exercise you want to do. You want to go back up the list to some of the running and the weightlifting. That would probably be better for you. If we're not stretching right, we can put stress on the tendons and the muscles in the wrong ways. And we can like, you know, not benefit the quality flow of blood. And definitely you can, you can not help uh, your meridians. So you want to make sure that you do stretching, right? You do it well, you know, not a lot of jerky movements, not a lot of things like that. I'm sure there's a ton of videos out there that show good quality stretches. Now we're getting even deeper into the calming exercises, Tai Chi and Qigong, which do have movements, but a lot of times they're slower movements and you're not using a lot of exertion. Tai Chi promotes the flow of Qi, benefiting multiple organs, including heart, lungs, spleen, kidney, liver. Yeah, enhances circulation. Okay, so this is what we were talking about earlier. It helps the, the Qi flow inside the body more. These slow movements, just slow movements in general, are going to help with the internal flow of chi, okay? Then we have other benefits similar to what we've seen before, muscle and joint health. You know, it doesn't put a whole lot of stress on the muscles or the joints. Uh, balance and coordination, it would be good if you're, you're prone to falling down, uh, things like that. So, it would, you know, for the elderly, in theory, it would be good. I mean, for young people too, for everybody. You know, these slow, slow movements, Tai Chi, Qigong, those would be good things to do. But again, assuming that you pick the right one and you learn a, a respectable practice, right? Like not some willy-nilly. I mean, that should be said for, for any of these exercises. You want to make sure that you have a good practice, you have a good teacher. You know, even anything, weightlifting, you don't want to willy-nilly go in there, uh, running, 
you know, we always see, we always see the person running, you know, trying to get they, they they their heart is in the right place. They're running, they're trying to get healthy, and you see them running down the road, and you're like, that's that's how you run. That doesn't look right. I, I don't know how much that's helping you, right? Even for running, we need to be sure that we learn how to do it the right way. All right. And then last but not least, actually not last, it's almost last, almost last. I have a surprise one at the very end. Last one would be meditation. So basically, meditation is basically no movement. This is the, the other end of physical exercises. This is an exercise that, that does virtually no movement whatsoever, sometimes no movement. Um, emotional balance, yes. Uh, this is a chi energy cultivation. You know, a lot of deep stuff can happen in the body through various meditation practices. Yes, stress reduction. Yes, help the liver, help all that. Just everything get nice and balanced. Improve concentration. Absolutely. Mind-body connection. Uh, yes. You can watch some of my videos on how mind and body are the same thing. But, but yes, yes. More of like, like our spirit and our soul and our body and just kind of keeping it all nice and balanced because the emphasis is so much on what we would call a yin emphasis. You're not moving. You're not moving at all. So in, if, if not done well, it could lead to coldness and things like that. Now, if you are doing the right practice and you're doing it well, then that could actually lead to, to warmth. There's Buddhists will go out in the snow, you know, and they'll sit there and meditate and warm you know, all the snow around them melts because they're so, they're so warm, right? That's pretty amazing. The last exercise, it's not really an exercise, it's group exercises. Group exercises and social activities. And you want to know what? I think that that could probably benefit anyone, right? Social well-being, right? Group exercises like dancing or team sports can promote community and emotional balance. That's for sure. Benefiting individuals with imbalances related to social isolation or emotional stress. Yeah, go join a team. Go do morning dancing. I don't know. You know, I'm sure it's fun. It looks funny. Usually the things that look funny are the they're fun. They're a lot of fun to do. All right. So that's it for today. I hope that from this, you have a, a better understanding of the various exercises out there and that what your constitution, the kind of person that you are, and you can choose the right exercises for you. Or if you do all of these exercises, you'll know, you'll get a better idea of how much to do of each one please go check out my website, ancientlifehacks.com. Sign up for the newsletter. You can get these notes that uh, I wrote up here that I was reading off of. Also, I am the MC for Shenyun Performing Arts, the world's premier classical Chinese dance company. We tour from late December to mid-May. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below to buy tickets and have the booking fee waived. You can come see me live on stage. I will not be doing the dancing, though I'm the MC, so I will introduce the pieces, but there are amazing dances. It's a great show. You're going to love it. Bring your friends and family. It's awesome. Now, if you are watching this and it is not during our touring season, you can see classical Chinese dance and amazing music online at Shenyun Zopin or Shenyun Creations. I have also left a link in the description below to that. All right, I will see you guys next week. 